My name is William David Caballero, and I'm a multimedia filmmaker, writer, composer, and artist. I am a descendant of Spanish colonizers, enslaved indigenous Taino natives, and West and Central African enslaved people. And I currently live on land that once belonged to the indigenous Tongva people. Artistically, I tell big stories using small figures. My creative documentary projects transform my subjects into 3D modeled figures inserted into miniature handmade sets. It strips away the veneer that 3D animation should be a medium for Pixar style films starring mostly white protagonists that are easily digestible by mainstream audiences and challenges the viewer to take a look at the lives of people of color who feel voiceless in today's America. My most prolific 3D printed protagonist has been my Puerto Rican grandfather, uh, wrong slide, uh, who starred in my comical web series, Grandpa Knows Best, which debuted on HBO for two seasons, and short film, Victor Nisolina, which will later premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, Museum of Modern Art, and helped me receive a Guggenheim Fellowship in 2018. When did you move to Estados Unidos? Uh, April uh, to, uh, 17, 1955. When did you meet Grandma? Well, I met gra Grandma in 19... I don't know. Was it love at first sight? I know, I know not like Grandpa too much. <laughs> She she's dominant woman. I mean, she want to do everything by well, by her own. She too 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 much. Daydream is a feature-length animated documentary and time capsule about my Puerto Rican American family who currently live in Fayetteville, North Carolina. In my hands, I'm holding a miniature replica of the mobile home that I grew up in, my father died in, and my mother still lives in. The film examines their struggles with poverty, drug addictions, disabilities, grief, as well as their hopes and dreams for the future, while tracing my connection to them as one of the only members of my family to step out of the cycle of poverty that keeps countless people of color from obtaining the American dream. A great example of what they dream will look and feel like can be seen in Chile and Millie, an animated short film funded by Latino Public Broadcasting, currently in production. This short film examines my mother's role as my father's sole caretaker until his death from due to complications from diabetes and kidney failure in May 2020. In the following excerpt, I'm visiting my parents and we are watching a scene from an autobiographical documentary that I shot back in grad school in 2007. As a quick note, this excerpt does not have any sound effects or music. While we were getting married, we had to rush him to the emergency room the same night. Boy, we hated that building. Oh, what building? The first building of, of the kidney center. I thank God that I have a wife. She take good care of me. Ow. Ow. Oh, yeah, that hurts right there. I need a lollipop. You need a lollipop. My hands hurt me. Yeah. What's wrong with your hands? Nerve damage. It hurts a little though. It's like <coughs> needles sticking in my hand. A lot of needles. And then my hand begins to feel like it's on fire. My knee replacement, October 2nd, I had a knee replacement, and then I had a hip replacement. I got two of them. Yeah, it's painful, but I mentally have to get myself better because I have other people that depend on me, like my husband and my mom and my dad. I remember in 2004, when my husband was really, really ill, at 8 o'clock in the morning, I got a call. I say to today that that, I think it was a blessing from God. I see my husband cringing like this, like this, like this, with his hand palm, but he was like in a state like this, really quiet, and I seen he was really stiff, and I, and I tried to call out to him, and I seen him sweating profusely. I tried to pick him up, but I couldn't pick him up. 
and he fell. And I was calling out to him, hun, hun, hun. I did everything I could. The EMS came because I called my mother because she lives in the front and she helped me. Daydream will possess the same visual style and aesthetic as Chili and Millie, and the 3D character models and sets will be reused. As the sole intellectual and bisexual member of my family, I serve as the documentary's protagonist, offering a vantage point similar to the many ambitious people of color who leave home for both higher education and to discover themselves, only to occasionally return home to a family that has largely stayed stagnant. In August of this year, I'll be returning to North Carolina for a three month artist residency at the McCall Center in Charlotte. I will travel every other weekend to Fayetteville to acquire informal interviews and anecdotes with a handful of multi-generational members of my family while working remotely with my 3D modeling team. Then I will spend the next three years building scenes based on these interviews, ranging from cinema verite to magical realism, ultimately creating a highly personal story about perseverance, cultural identity and hope amongst crippling social inequality and inaccessibility, a pervasive theme amongst low-income people living in America today. What do I need to bring Daydream to fruition? Well, mostly additional funding and dedicated studio space. In regards to funding, I'm estimating the project will cost around $400,000 to $500,000 to complete. This funding is crucial to pay for my team of 3D modelers, riggers, animators, and compositors, as well as miniature set designers and other creative collaborators. In regards to space, there's only so much I can do in my one bedroom apartment in Hollywood. I need more space to house my miniature sets, camera and lighting gear, and digital work environment. Oh, and if you happen to know Lin-Manuel Miranda, please tell him that I exist and that I'm uh, pretty much his creative doppelganger. So yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to learn about The Day Dream, a project that will not only challenge and push the boundaries of my creative filmmaking practice, but one that will also allow me to share a very personal story about myself, my family, Puerto Rican American Boricua culture, and the validity of individualism. I'll leave you with one last mantra that fuels my work as an American filmmaker of color. If we don't tell our stories in our own unique voice, someone else will. Thank you. <laughs>